Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for July 2021 with me, Alan Wallace. And coming up this month, we've got a bit of a mixed bag. So it's going to be the last month where you can see and photograph the noctilucent clouds. We're pretty much within the peak of Milky Way core season. There are a few meteor showers picking up this month that you should probably be aware of. I'm going to talk about how to see and photograph the new Chinese space station and Mercury also reaches greatest western elongation. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of topics such as graphic design, photography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on Nightscapes, an introduction to all things landscape astrophotography. Or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes, which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astrophotographs with newfound knowledge. I've been using Skillshare for over two years now and making use of their courses on freelancing, running a business, but also Photoshop, logo design and animation classes that help me create the introduction clip to this series. So if you want to try Skillshare Premium for yourself and get access to all of those courses, the first 1000 people to click the link in the video description will get a completely free trial of Skillshare Premium for a limited time. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll see Cassiopeia rising into the Northeast. That's closely followed by the very indistinct Camelopardalis. And you will also notice the constellation Andromeda rising into the Northeast in the evening sky. So the Andromeda Galaxy M31 now visible pretty much all night. Facing west in the evening skies, you will get a brief glimpse of Venus and Mars just after sunset. Venus obviously a lot brighter than Mars, but if we look as the month goes by, so this is the 8th and then the 9th, the 10th, they get closer and closer. This is the 11th where there'll also be a very thin crescent moon on the 12th. The moon moves into a position above Mars and Venus. This is a really nice photographic opportunity. And then on the 13th is the conjunction where Venus and Mars will be about 0.5 degrees away from each other, which is about a quarter of the width of your finger of an outstretched arm. So it'll be very, very close in the sky on the 13th and even on the 14th and 15th they're still pretty close together. Zooming out and facing west you'll see Leo the lion now making its way down to the horizon in the evening skies and you'll also see Ursa Major the big bear coming down to the northwestern horizon making its way into its more upright position um, which it will achieve by around local midnight. Facing south, and of course, it's absolutely dominated by the Milky Way core. So you'll see the constellations Scorpius and Sagittarius arching across the southern horizon. The Milky Way core out all night now, and it even begins to set in the southwest in the pre dawn hours. So a clear sign that we're entering the latter half of Milky Way core season. Facing east, you'll notice Saturn and Jupiter both rising very early now, rising in the late evening. They are underneath the Milky Way arch and they are gearing up for opposition next month. So next month is when Saturn and Jupiter will be shining their brightest. And if you look in the east, you'll also see the constellations Pegasus and Andromeda rising into the eastern sky. So again, Andromeda there spending a lot of the evening very low on the horizon providing a really nice opportunity because the Andromeda galaxy even shows up in your wide angle images. Then for you early risers, you will get a brief glimpse of Mercury in the eastern morning skies, although very difficult to see unless you have a nice clear view of the horizon. And it's on the 4th where Mercury reaches greatest western elongation. And then as the month goes by, it begins to sink closer and closer to the sun until it disappears and it reaches superior conjunction next month. 
On to the southern hemisphere where as darkness falls facing south you'll see the large and small Magellanic clouds now very low on the southern horizon so that's a really nice opportunity for some wide angle shots with some foreground interest. And as we enter the late evening the small Magellanic clouds starts to rise a little bit higher and then the Carina and Crux regions of the Milky Way stand pretty much vertical to the horizon. Boy, I need to get myself back to the Southern Hemisphere. Facing west in the evening skies, you'll find Venus and Mars very close to one another. Venus obviously a lot brighter than Mars. But this is the 8th, and if I skip forward in the days to the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, where they get really, really close. On the 12th, they're joined with a very thin crescent moon. That's a really nice photographic opportunity there. And then on the 13th is when the conjunction happens and Mars and Venus are about 0.5 degrees apart. And then for the next few days, they're still pretty close to one another in the sky. Zooming out, still facing west, You'll see Leo the Lion now beginning to set in the late evening skies. So we're saying goodbye to Leo. Facing north in this incredibly wide angle view, you can see the Milky Way core starting very high in the eastern skies. And then as we approach midnight, it comes almost pretty much overhead, depending on where exactly you are in the southern hemisphere. And then after that, it begins to sink down to the western horizon. So really nice for tracking the Milky Way core, but very difficult to get the Milky Way core with some foreground interest as well. Really have to do like a huge vertical panorama. Facing east in the evening skies, you'll notice Saturn now rising very early. And that is closely followed by Jupiter as well so really nice opportunity there with the two planets very low on the horizon in the east and they're pretty much visible all night long once they've risen uh, but it won't be until next month when they come to opposition and they'll be shining at their brightest also at the start of the month you'll be able to find mercury in the eastern morning skies and it reaches greatest western elongation around the 4th to the 5th of July and then as the month goes by it sinks closer and closer to the Sun where next month it will be at superior conjunction. As for conjunctions and close approaches this month on the 8th Mercury and a very thin crescent moon can be found in the eastern morning skies. Already mentioned the 11th to the 12th where a crescent moon will be passing by Mars and Venus in the evening skies, easily one of the best photographic opportunities this month. And then on the 24th and 25th is when a gibbous moon will be passing by the bright Saturn and Jupiter. As for the full moon this month, it falls on the 24th and it was known by early Native American tribes as the buck moon because male deer who shed their antlers every year begin to regrow them around this time of year. It's also known as the Thunder Moon after the summer storms that occur at this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. As for the special events this month, so there are a few meteor showers that become active and peak during this month that you should probably be aware of. So first up is the Capricornus with the radiant point in Capricornus. So it favors the Southern Hemisphere. It becomes active from about the second peaks on the 30th right at the end of the month and then sort of tails off into August. But on that peak on the 30th you can expect sort of up to five meteors per hour so it's a bit of a minor shower. There is another more prominent meteor shower in the Delta Aquarius this month. The Delta Aquarius has its radiant point within the constellation Aquarius so again kind of favors the southern hemisphere but if you are in the northern hemisphere you probably see a few if you're facing southwest south or, or southeast. 
It becomes active around the 16th and also peaks on the 30th with about 15 to 25 meteors per hour. But unfortunately, it is timed with a gibbous moon, so there will be even less uh, visible meteors than that. Same for the Capricornids as well. But it's nice to know that meteor activity is going to be a bit higher than normal this month. And to top it off, the Perseids meteor shower becomes active from about the 16th. Now the Perseids obviously have a more prolific meteor shower, it's one of the best of the year, but it doesn't peak until the 12th and the 13th of August. So I'll talk about it more in next month's video, but it's nice to know that it becomes active this month. So if you are out and about, just keep your eyes on the sky and see if you can spot a meteor or two. We now have an opportunity to photograph another manned space station. So China has begun constructing its multi-module space station in space, Tiangong. At the moment, it's only the, the sort of core module, which is called Tianhe-1. That was launched back in April. It's been in orbit since April. And then last month in June uh, is when we saw the first three Chinese astronauts actually board that core module Tianhe. They're going to be on there for the next two or three months, sort of testing all the systems and everything. Um, and over the next couple of years, China's going to be adding more modules to that space station and making it bigger. So I'll put some links in the description down below to the Heavens Above website because that gives you the information for any visible passes in your area. Just make sure to adjust your location in the, the sort of top right corner of the Heavens Above website. And it's obviously the same as photographing the International Space Station. So in your long exposure photographs, you'll capture the trail as it passes steadily across the sky. And that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Keep an eye out for the NLCs, keep an eye out for the Space Station, the International Space Station and the Chinese Space Station. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme to photograph and then people upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens and I pick my favourite three of the month to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. And first place wins a Photo View Photography Guidebook of their choice. Last month's theme was... Last month's theme was Twilight, and I've refrained from picking any Noctilucent cloud images because that's going to be the subject this month. But anyway, without further ado, in third place was this lovely image from Jen Rogers of the Milky Way starting to appear during Twilight. So you've still got that bit of orange colour to the horizon. And for me, I love that period of the night where the Milky Way is just starting to become visible and the nights are getting darker and darker. And this image, beautifully composed image, has captured that moment sort of wonderfully. In second place was this nicely framed image by Photographia Astronomia. Um, a full moon high in the sky there. And I just love the, the pink band there, which is, of course, the, the band of Venus. And underneath that, you see the blue color, which is my absolute favorite color in the world. That's actually Earth's shadow being cast onto the atmosphere by the sun, which is sort of just set. And I just love the leading lines of the path, the, the buildings adding that subject, and just using those trees to frame the scene very beautifully. So well done on that. And in first place was this beautiful, simple image from... Murray Richard of a very, very gorgeously thin crescent moon and of course Venus shining nice and bright and just again that strong gorgeous yellow of twilight and in the foreground there you've got some, some sheep lying down and just enjoying the last moments of twilight and I don't know why, I just, just something about this scene that was just really, really lovely and simple and, yeah, really caught my eye early on. So, well done to Murray Richard. And as I mentioned, this month, guys, I'm going to go with Noctilucent Clouds. I know it's a little bit unfair because not all of you live in the Northern Hemisphere, 
Well, I gotta do it. I'm sorry. So this month we're gonna do Knock the Loose and Clouds. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Mm-hmm.